brother! Quick warning, this video will contain spoilers for Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Oh man, you guys! Crimes of Grindelwald is finally out on video, which means it is time to dive back into the wizarding world of the 1920s and uncover some mysteries. In particular, I was interested in dissecting a certain scene at the very end of the movie. No, 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 not that one. This one. Yes, that one. That one. The one where Newt and friends are arriving on the bridge to Hogwarts and Jacob can be seen looking around at something. Because if the stories are true, muggles shouldn't be able to see the castle. So the question is, can he? And if so, could he be magical? <laughs> I've only ever seen that in Salamanders. Oh, it's literally my favorite scene in the entire movie, which is why we created a shirt just for the occasion, available only through the end of the month. You can get your very own We Finish Each Other's Salamanders shirt over at supercollinbrothers.store. So, Jacob Kowalski. Could he indeed be magical? We've in the past theorized that it's possible he is a descendant of none other than Helga Hufflepuff, a theory I still 100% buy into. But even if he is, that doesn't necessarily mean he would definitely be magical. And honestly, I don't think that he is. Or at least, I mean, I don't think he can cast spells or use a wand or anything like that. But there is still a little bit of a gray area. Even if he's not a fully qualified qualified wizard, could he be a squib? A squib, in case you need a quick refresher, is essentially the opposite of a muggle-born wizard. They are, for the most part, a wizard-born muggle. As in, they have magical parents, but no magical powers. But they are not completely normal, either. For one, they are allowed knowledge and access to the wizarding world. Two, certain things are visible to them that would not be visible to an ordinary muggle, such as the Hogwarts castle. And three, we've seen several cases where squibs have an affinity with magical animals. Argus Filch, the caretaker at Hogwarts, is the squib we know the most about, and indeed he fulfills all three of these requirements. He can totally see the Hogwarts castle because he, well, you know, he works there. And he has a very special connection with his cat, Mrs. Norris, as does the only other well-known squib in the books, Arabella Fig, who breeds measles. So with that in mind, let's turn our attention back to Jacob, because the more I research it, the more I am convinced he is a squib. Going back to that scene on the bridge, it's standing out and creating a really big buzz on Twitter because if you pause it at just the right moment, it looks like Jacob is kind of confused. Which would make sense because according to the book, if a muggle were to look at Hogwarts, what they would see instead is a moldering old ruin with a sign over the entrance saying, danger, do not enter, unsafe. And if they remember to include that in the movie, well then bravo on you, Warner Brothers, because that is a tiny detail. But that said, I strongly disagree with that interpretation of the scene because having watched it again in real time, I don't think he's looking around at withering old ruins. I think he is totally taking in the majesty of Hogwarts Castle. And if confirmed, that alone would pretty much give away the true nature of his squibbiness. Because as we said before, Filch is a squib and we know he can see the castle. Or maybe he can't. Maybe that's why he's so angry. Like, total plot twist. The reason Filch hates everyone is because he thinks he's been assigned to clean up a moldering old ruin. But the castle is not the only thing we see Jacob maybe seeing that other muggles shouldn't be able to see. For one, let's start with the Obscurus. When he's down in Newt's case, he is totally drawn to it and can 100% see it, and Newt explains to him what it is. That scene, in case you were wondering, is called exposition. That's when one character explains another thing to a character, not for the benefit of that character, but for us, the viewing audience. But when Jacob sees the Obscurus, we, the audience, think nothing of it. I mean, we, the audience, can see it, and Newt doesn't seem alarmed that Jacob can see it, and Newt is the expert on all things magical, so if it was unusual for Jacob to see it, you'd think he would speak up about it, right? Possibly, but remember, the Obscurus Newt has in his case is kind of a one-of-a-kind thing. Nobody else has ever really successfully been able to keep one outside of its host body before. So even Newt may be unaware if an Obscurus is normally visible to non-magical people. But we know. We, the audience, see Credence attack Henry Shaw Jr. at the newspaper 
party political thing? I don't know. Let me just read you the description. Suddenly, something explodes forth from underneath the organ. Something huge and bestial, although invisible, is soaring down the hall. Tables fly, people are thrown, lights smash, and people scream as it carves a line towards the stage. Senator Shaw is thrown backward against his own poster, raised up high, suspended for a moment in midair before being brought down with a violent crash. Dead. 64 words in that paragraph, but only one of them matters. Invisible. The Nomadges could not see Credence in his obscurus form. Nor would it seem could anybody else who happened to witness him destructing up everything, unless they were magical. But remember, Jacob could. Of course, on the other hand, I guess there's also just the possibility that as an Obscurus, he simply has the ability to become invisible at will, to show himself or not show himself. At this point, we just don't have enough information. And Crimes of Grindelwald unfortunately didn't help because it didn't put Jacob in front of another Obscurus. But it did do a few other tricky things with Jacob in terms of stuff he may or may not be able to see. For example, the dark cloths Grindelwald drapes all over Paris. These are only visible to wizards, not muggles. Honestly, if you didn't pick up on that, I don't blame you. I didn't realize it myself until I actually read it in the screenplay. But the point is, while this is happening, they cut to every other character and show them looking up, seeing the dark cloths. But they do not cut to Jacob, so we don't know whether or not he saw them. But we do see him see something else, and that is what's happening inside Nicholas Flamel's crystal ball. Now whether or not a muggle should be able to see something in a crystal ball is not really known to us. But while there, Jacob literally makes mention of a time he went to a fortune teller with a crystal ball at a fair and paid a dame to tell him his future. She missed out on quite a bit actually. Personally, I don't know whether muggle crystal balls are different from wizard crystal balls or if only a wizard would be able to see anything in either, but either way, this strikes me as suspicious. And yes, I hear you. Wouldn't Nicholas Flamel comment on the fact that Jacob could see something in the crystal ball if he thought he was a muggle and shouldn't be able to see something in the crystal ball? Maybe, but maybe not, because Flamel may not even realize that Jacob isn't a wizard. I mean, he arrived in his house with three other wizards, and Dumbledore's the one who told him some friends might be dropping by. Ah, do you just, do you see the pattern here? How anytime Jacob sees something he should or maybe shouldn't be able to see, we, the audience, don't know the full story about whether or not he should or shouldn't be able to see it. I mean, so far it has happened four times with Hogwarts, the Dark Cloth, the Crystal Ball, and the Obscurus. That's a lot! And that's not even the only qualifying factor about squibs. As we mentioned earlier, the other one would be having an affinity with magical animals. And again, this is so cleverly hidden. I mean, he's not exactly walking around with a cat sidekick or anything, but the moment he gets into Newt's case, he is just like, yeah, let's do it. Magical animals, they're all totally awesome. Let me help you out. And we, the audience, just roll with it because Newt is this like fantastic magical beast expert. And of course, everything is is behaving exactly the way it's supposed to for Jacob. We don't give any second thought to it. But I'll tell you what, he undeniably hits it off with that irrumpent. Hmm? <laughs> now, the other obvious problem with this theory is that for it to be true, wouldn't Jacob need to have at least one magical parent? And if he did, wouldn't he already know this about himself? Yes, very good points. And yet, there are actually some existing situations that could explain why he wouldn't know. First of all, we don't know anything about his parents at all. All we really know about his family is that one, his grandmother was a great baker and that his brother died in World War One, And that maybe he's a Hufflepuff. Seriously, go check that video out, full video by clicking the card. For all we know though, at least one of his parents was magical and they just never told their son, which I know sounds convenient, but it's not as crazy as it seems. Let us remember, after all, that Jacob immigrated to America at a young age where the magic and non-magic communities were not getting along very well, so it might have been prudent for his magical parent to hide that information. And to that end, if just one parent was magical, it's possible the other didn't even know that about their spouse. That scenario is in fact the exact situation McGonagall's mother found herself in. Which, side note, guess who's 
full name is revealed in the extended cut of the movie and who we can also see plainly wearing a gold chain around her neck. Mm, time turner. I'm fine. Sorry, Minerva. A lot of marking. McGonagall's mother married a muggle man, and in doing so, gave up magic forever. And she never even told him, and she never would have if it weren't for the fact that they had a daughter who then started to show magical abilities herself. And that was in Europe. Again, this is in America, where the relationship between the two communities is not as good. So if you had a son and you didn't think he was magical, maybe, yeah, you just keep quiet, because what difference does it make? If anything, it could even be to his benefit that he doesn't know. This is all assuming his parents were alive at all. Again, we know nothing about his parents. Maybe they just died when he was really young and never even had the chance to tell him about their own heritage. And if you're still not sold, let me just end on this question. Why are we, the audience, so certain right away that Jacob is a muggle? Well, I'll tell you why. Because every other character goes out of their way to tell us he's a muggle. At least tell me you took care of the nomad. I ain't never really talked to a nomad. See, so you're a muggle, so our physiologies are subtly different. Hmm, different physiology indeed. And yet, Newt is actually contradicting himself here. Earlier, he said a severe reaction to the Mertlap bite would be... Flames out of his anus. And while he maintains it's a bad reaction, the flames never happen. So maybe their physiology isn't so different after all. And even if this is true, you're saying, what difference does it make? Does it change the story very much? Well, maybe not a ton, but... But it does open the door for a very happy ending for Queenie and Jacob, who probably could then legally get married in America. Plus, it would be a big reveal and plot twist, especially if they combine it with the fact that he is indeed a descendant of Alcohol Hufflepuff. Squib or Muggle, either way, I think it is important to have a non-magic character in this particular story because of the way it's folding in a wizard versus non-wizard kind of way. But Ben, my question for you and everybody else is, what do you think? Could Jacob be a squib let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below don't forget you guys our limited we finish each other salamander shirts are on sale now at supercarlinbrothers.store they are available only until the end of february so if you want one act fast guys thanks as always for watching today's video please leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future harry potter action from us if you want to see how jacob could be a hufflepuff you can check out this video right here or if you want to find out the truth about Minerva McGonagall, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you in another life, brother.